Uh, welcome everybody to the webinar on um, a roadmap of, for energy technology RD and the um, budget data, co-organized by the International Energy Agency and Mission Innovation. I represent the International Energy Agency that work in the Energy Data Center on data. First of all, I would like to thank Mission Innovation and Grid and colleagues. We have a very uh, nice collaboration, consolidated joint activities uh, in the space of innovation uh, to really, as an objective, build a joint community uh, on innovation. And clearly, this also includes data work. Um, we, in fact, uh, uh, have a collaboration on joint data collection for our DNB data with Mission Innovation, uh, in particular in this phase. Um, I give uh, a quick uh, overview from the International Energy Agency, but really we are uh, very um, much emphasizing the importance of uh, innovation to reach energy transitions and climate objectives. If you take our flagship report, uh, uh, net zero roadmap by 2050, there is a strong message on the importance of increasing uh, clean energy innovation. Uh, both for the deployment of the technologies that are available and also to increase the use of the technologies that are not yet um, on the market. So the AEA estimates that about half the technologies needed to reach uh, net zero are still in the development phase. So clean energy innovation needs to accelerate rapidly and governments need to put up the uh, and the uh, research development and demonstration and deployment at the core of energy policy and climate policy. But at the IEA, at the foundation of the policy work, we clearly have a solid uh, work on data. And uh, the focus today will be on data. Um, the IEA itself has its own uh, work on innovation tracking. For example, we are going to publish uh, uh, soon a tracking clean energy progress report to assess the status of critical energy technologies and give a recommendation on how to really get uh, in, on track for the long-term climate goals. But in the domain of innovation data, one of the key areas we mentioned to our members is really tracking investment on public uh, research development and demonstration budgets for different energy technologies. Um, clearly, even pu public and private are both essential, but we focus in our member uh, requirements on the public uh, uh, budgets. Um, in, in fact, we do have at the IEA uh, consolidated uh, data collection on uh, energy technologies uh, at D&D. We have a unit database, I would say, in the world with time series that go back to uh, 1974. And the next release will be on May 3rd. Um, and we thank actually the work of many experts in the world. Many are here today, will speak and participate in the webinar. Um, because it's thanks to the national work that we can feed our international database. But through this work, we have realized how um, maybe the different experts in different countries don't find the work always easy or straightforward. So uh, we embarked last year in this project, uh, trying to see what can we do to help um, maybe uh, deepening this understanding at, at country level, uh, what uh, strategies are needed to to be put in place to address the different type of challenges. What are the difficulties are that in the institutional arrangement, in the legal framework, in the technicalities of the data collection, in the classifications? So different countries have different approaches, but we kind of wanted to consult as many of you as possible and synthesize the information in the form of a guidance to define a national roadmap. It's a document that is available on the web now was released last fall and we are here to promote its use today and to explain how it can be used both as a tool uh, to assess the status of a country reporting compared to a sort of uh, ideal framework across all its different blocks that we mentioned but also as a guidance document to improve uh, different areas or establish a new data collection so we're addressing both beginners and more advanced uh, data providers um, of course, IEA will be very happy to work with any of you uh, to improve the data together and using this tool. Um, and so we are looking forward to this uh, webinar and uh, the continued collaboration with the IEA. 
I would like to thank in particular Susie Le France, uh, DIA, uh, and Ingrid, of course, for the uh, sorry, organization of this event. And I wish you a very fruitful uh, experience through the webinar. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Roberta. Now I'd like to yeah, give the floor to Ingrida um, from the European Commission and the Mission Innovation Secretariat that will give some introductory words as well. Thank you very much, uh, Susie and Roberta. Hi, everyone. It is uh, actually an absolute pleasure to be joining the MI's IA's webinar today on tracking public energy R&D investment. <clears throat> so my name is Ingrida morosky -Tabul. I am the Mission Innovation Insights Module Manager, and I come from the Joint Research Center of European Commission. Um, <clears throat> exchanging experience and practices when it comes to public R&D data collection is undoubtedly very important, and we can clearly see that from our own line of work. So in the Insights module, um, we focus on tracking clean energy innovation using data on really various indicators, such as private and public investments, uh, patents, venture capital uh, investments, uh, standards, levelized cost of electricity, uh, total installed capacity, really among other indicators. Uh, all of these come from the JRC and my partner organizations, IA and uh, also IRENA. So um, I want to share with you a, a very recent example from our last workshop that took place on 22nd of March in Rio de Janeiro as part of the MI Senior Officials Annual Gathering. We um, presented the Insights Module plans for the upcoming uh, year, uh, focusing on particular uh, on our main deliverable, which is Energy Innovation Metrics Hub. This hub uh, will will be uh, like a platform uh, in a form of a dashboard, uh, collating information on the already mentioned indicators, but also others uh, that will be categorized uh, per MI mission topic area. Uh, so such as hydrogen, um, green powered future mission, uh, shipping and so on. And um, to collect feedback on, on such proposal of ours, right, we have therefore produced uh, a short online survey to um, Mission Innovation members uh, that was prior to the event, where we asked them which indicators would they find the most useful for their governments to have included into the hub that we will be uh, collaboratively producing. So the top five answers in the precise order uh, where public R&D investments, uh, cost of technology, demonstration projects, technology performance, and private R&D investments. So today we're discussing the number one, uh, public R&D investments, which is something that MI countries surely feel a great need to track. Um, one of the key discussion points during our event was that solid data on public investments helps to make informed policy decisions on energy research. It helps to uh, assess the performance of research uh, programs already in place and to design also new funding schemes. Um, I think as most of you know, uh, perhaps already, uh, my countries report on their public R&D investments to the IEA. Uh, in order to make the process easier and better aligned and also to avoid a duplicative effort, um, uh, even those of my countries that are non-IA members report via simplified version of the IA questionnaire. And um, we're tracking this uh, from the MI pers MI's perspective as, um, as all of my members have actually, uh, in the second phase of MI, agreed to sustain or increase uh, their public R&D energy investments. And um, during the event, we have also uh, heard from uh, Brazil about their experience on reporting to the IEA. Uh, they were the first non-IEA, uh, now association uh, country, uh, to actually do it. And uh, one of the key points that was raised um, was also the knowledge sharing with other MI countries in this process and really learning from the experience of others that uh, perhaps had already more established uh, data collection processes already in place. And um, indeed, um, collecting, validating and disseminating these data is a really complex process, just as the roadmap report uh, very thoroughly uh, explains. 
Um, also, like what Roberta just mentioned, you know, countries are on very different journeys, like uh, Austria collects energy R&D data since uh, 1974. Meantime, we have Lithuania that started in 2020 and now has run what three uh, data collection cycles. Um, this is why it is absolutely essential to have these opportunities to really best learn from the experience of other countries through the through the reports like these and and well events like these, right? Um, so um, on that note, I really look forward to hearing uh, the presentations from national experts on their country's experiences and and perspectives. And um, I believe I hand uh, back to Roberta. Oh uh, no, so yeah, no, thank you, Grida. Sorry, <laughs> because the main person here is Susie, who is close to me. So um, I hand back to Susie, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and uh, she will actually explain what we are talking about with this uh, doc new document, the guide to design a roadmap for energy technology. Uh, and the budgets. Uh, and so actually, I'm leaving the floor to Susie for this presentation that will be the opening the framework uh, and then we'll have a presentation from country experts. Thank you, Roberta. Just share my presentation. So, yeah, thank you, Roberta. Thank you, Ingrida. So, yeah, my name is Susie Lucas. I'm an energy data officer in the innovation and indicators. Uh, on innovation and in indicators in the um, in the energy data center at the AA. So here I'll be going through uh, what we do at the AA in terms of uh, energy R and D data and how we try to support countries in their efforts through sort the publication of a roadmap that uh, Roberta mentioned. So this roadmap to track tracking public investment uh, in energy research. So the first question that we might want to ask ourselves before we look at all this is why, why are we here today, basically, why we make all this effort to collect this data and why we collect public energy data. There are several reasons, but maybe the first one is to, to support the design, the evaluation and the adjustments of uh, public policies related to energy, innovation or both at the same time. This data allows us to identify gaps uh, and opportunities in current investments and define new priorities. If, for example, hydrogen is a national priority in a country, assessing if the amount of existing agenda investments um, is enough and make sure that maybe more efforts are needed um, in this data. Uh, it's also, yeah, it's possible to use those data to evaluate existing programs, for example, if the defined objectives that have been decided at the beginning have been fulfilled during the program. It's also allowed to benchmark countries against each other, providing that there, are, like, there is the same methodology and, uh, and defini definitions used, which is what we're here for as well, to make sure that uh, all the data is comparable between countries. It's also quite useful for the private sector in their own energy innovation strategies because the public sector has the possibility to maybe invest in more, more niche and less like market ready um, technologies that the private sector can. So for all this reason, the IA has been, as Roberta mentioned before, the IA has been uh, collecting this data from uh, its members' national administration for a number of years. So that we publish twice a year and we'll get the new version in in about a month on our website so what do we have in this database so we have research development and demonstration budgets uh, funded by national governments and state and enterprises so all of this can be disaggregated between r d and demonstration and between governments and soes it goes from 1974 to present day so when the next relief we'll have like uh, even 2023 data from some of the countries. It covers the, uh, like all the 31 IEA member countries as well as Brazil and the European Union. And we are always looking to support any other country that want to collect this data so as to expand the coverage of the database. So it covers, in terms of technology, it covers um, 
quite a high number of technologies separated in uh, seven main groups of technologies, which are energy efficiency, fossil fuels, they include CCS, renewable, nuclear, hydrogen and fuel cells, other power and storage and cross-cutting research as well. Uh, and then those uh, group of technologies are disaggregated into like three levels further. So for example, under renewable, you'll find like solar, uh, solar energy, which in turn will be split between, between solar PV, solar thermal, and so on. So you can see here preliminary results from the next release in May. Uh, as I mentioned, most of the work is not done by us at the IEA. Uh, it's done by the country, so we're very grateful of, for all the effort they put in collecting this data. Uh, it doesn't go without its challenge. Uh, of course, there can be such as like where and how to start collecting this data when it's not currently the case, how to identify possible improvements in the existing data collections, how to extend the coverage, improve the technology disaggregation. Uh, one quite big challenge as well is how to maintain data quality year on year, uh, taking into account that there might be a lack of resources or a high staff turnover. And of course, as well, ensuring that the metadata is at the level of the data itself. So based on all this challenge that we heard from the country through like workshop that we had or discussion we had with them, we identified that there was maybe like a lack of um, a, like a missing tool in terms of support because we give uh, support in terms of methodology, but we don't help we didn't help that much on how to help the countries actually collect this data and this is where like the roadmap came from so based on this necessity for knowledge and experience sharing we started this uh, roadmap project it was a product of discussions between countries so you can see the countries that participated uh, in the project and we're very grateful to them as well as the other countries um, that might not participate in the roadmap, but we have that have helped us identify these issues over the years. So the result is basically a description of the variety of country approaches to set up and maintain a public energy RGND data collection system. And this is intending that both like a guide for both the countries not currently uh, collecting this data, but also countries with more advanced system that look like strengthening some of the areas. So the report is structured as you can see. So we try to make it yeah, in different uh, parts to make it clearer and help countries focus on certain areas uh, at one time. So uh, it's with like six main components that we identify that are like in turn separated into different parts. So you'll have first, maybe like the first thing to look at is like the purpose. Why are we collecting this data? What do we want to achieve in the end? What kind of output we're going to, we're going to need? So this is where you will, the country should probably like define clear objectives so as to, to end up with a well structured and defined uh, data collection system. Then there is like the institution arrangements. Um, this is where like the country might want to look at like how to set up the framework. So who's going to be coordinating the data collection and what resources are going to be used. Then you want to look at what the innovation landscape look like. So map the partners and the data sources who's funding, performing uh, energy RD and D. Then create the network more on a working level. So who are who are going to be the the contact point in each of the institution or and so on then they, you get to the to the phase where like you will do the actual um, data collection processing and validation uh, here you might want to start by assessing if there's data uh, already available that you can build, build you, that you could be building upon uh, then you want to define the collection and the classification as well as the validation, of course, uh, of the data. Then maybe in parallel of this, there's the data management and technology, which is where you're going to look more at the IT tools. What are you going to use in terms of software really for the technical parts um, 
And if you want to use maybe like uh, errors or more advanced way of classifying the data, for example. Then, of course, in the end, you have the actual dissemination of the data because all the work that's been done before, if the data is not properly disseminated, it's not going to show like the real value of the work that's been done. So you hear like countries might want to look at how they're going to share the data itself, the data sets, and also how they're going to communicate the finding uh, through analysis to the important stakeholders. And of course, the continuous improvement that goes for all the components of this data collection, where you want to establish something that is going to work year on year and that's going to be improved. For example, the map partners like step of the institution arrangement, you will want to do that every year because you don't want to miss new actors that might appear over the years. So this was the main part of the report. Uh, but we also like publish country annexes associated um, with the report. So for each country, based on the discussions that we had with them, this like, interview that we conducted, we defined some sort of like mini report with the, the same structure but applied to the country where we describe more in details um, how they do like their data collect collection. So it also goes through like the institution arrangement, the collection classification and validation process the data management and technology and the data dissemination. So this is where you and if like you want to have more concrete examples uh, you can look at. So the first component that I mentioned, so the purpose, um, so sorry, like in each of this section, I'm sorry, like we look at what the country needs to consider in the data collection system and the key question they might want to ask themselves. So for example, when looking at the purpose of the data collection, it's really important to define like the specifics of the desired output uh, from the beginning. So to end up with a well-constructed system and a final process that is appropriate uh, to the users. Here, for example, countries can ask themselves, like what are the national needs for this uh, data collection process? What are the requirements of the different innovation stakeholders? Like uh, what governments we want to look at, what the experts we want to look at. So you define your, your process well, and also what are the data you want to collect. So a good example of a country that really set up like clear objective uh, was Brazil when in 2018 they launched a quite ambitious project to improve the like the process of collecting and compiling energy identity data. But the main objective was to, was to guide public policies and fill gaps. Um, so this was a way to end up with the process that is quite, quite good now. So then while looking at the institutional, institutional arrangements, um, one of the a key elements will be first, like who will coordinate the data collection and what resources avail are available. Then you will want to ask yourself like who funds and perform the public energy identity in the country to see like all the actors that you need to be in contact with. Um, and also who will be the key contacts for the collection and validation in all the relevant institutions. And so you can maintain and ensure like a good working relationship, but also a good like high level uh, relationship. Um, Austria is an example where like the ministry like responsible for to the IA to submit the data decided to outsource externalize the data collection through a, through a tender. So it's now being done since I think about like 15 years by the Austrian Energy Agency. So this is an example where the ministry decided to delegate the work to uh, experts on the subject. Then when looking at the process, so data collection, processing and validation, uh, some example of questions. So what I say, like those are just example of like key questions, but it's also, uh, it's of course there's like a lot more questions and you can find more details in the roadmap, of course. But some example of key question is like, is there, for example, an existing data collection process that already exists and that could be built upon uh, and not started from scratch? 
um, what would be the best means to collect the data. So this could be to service to the funding organization or performing organization, or this could be to through a database uh, that might include like project data or that institution would use to, to input their data. Uh, it's also good to look at how can the data be checked for consistency and accuracy um, at the end of the data collection. So an example is this is Switzerland, so the Federal Office of Energy, the one responsible for this data collection. And they set up a quite like uh, exhaustive like uh, process uh, with a very good coverage in the end where they use both uh, existing project databases, but they also complement them to, with surveys to research organizations. And they also use uh, secondary data sources to, to complete the uh, to complete the data. Then in terms of data management and technology, so here it's very technical and it's of course in parallel with the with the previous phase is like here you just you will look at what actual IT tools you're going to be using to collect the data. Should you be using AI for example to to classify the data in a better way or what type of software you're going to use to store the data. So here it's very in terms of uh, a technical term because maybe you're currently using uh, Excel files to gather the data from the institution and then like sending everything in an aggregated way to yeah, yeah, for example for yourself as well. Uh, but maybe you want to look at uh, if a database want to be uh, more efficient, it's of course uh, depending on the country and the situation. Uh, in Estonia, for example, the data collection is fully done through a database and uh, they then like categorize the projects based on keywords that are related to energy. Then finally, when you get to the data dissemination, uh, quite important part as well, this is where you will look at how can the data be effectively communicated. So this could be to ministry and RD&D actors, for example, who will need maybe detailed information in like one technology in particular, where you will want to look in a very disaggregated data. Or if you want to talk to the public, maybe you're going to want to, to share more aggregated data, more high level to give an idea of the priorities in the country. So you want to like how, what the, who the target audience is. Uh, to adapt when you share the data. A good question to ask yourself uh, as well is how can the data be published in open access so to make everything you collect fully available to the, to the public, which is usually uh, good for transparency, in which case you will need to be uh, even more careful about what the, about the metadata that you publish with the data to, to make sure everything is uh, transparent. Uh, Canada is an example of a country that publishes each, publish each year, sorry, um, an energy fact book done by the natural by Natural Resources Canada, where they um, give um, an overview of the status of energy in Canada, and it includes the, like all of the indicators, but includes uh, energy audience. So to conclude, uh, this roadmap is really for like for us like a tool for countries to internally assess their data collection system. Uh, it should be the basis for discussions with the country on how they can improve and set up the data collection. And would be like it's been said by Roberta, we'd be very happy to collaborate with any interested country to assess the status of their data collection system if it started or not, and like identify priority step using this roadmap as a basis. So please don't hesitate to express your interest and you'll find like the, the audio, like you can contact us at rdnd.org. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you have any questions during, um, during the, um, if you have any questions during all of this um, presentation, so this goes during like the presentation. So if you have any question about the presentation I did or even the presentation later uh, from the country, please don't hesitate to use the Q&A uh, section. 
Um, now I would like, before I give the, the floor to, to, to Ian, I would like to uh, share with you a mentee uh, question, though I don't know if you're all familiar with it, uh, but this is a way also to give some interactivity uh, to this. So, here. So, if you go to the um, to this website, so menti.com, uh, and you follow the um, and you write the code uh, that is written uh, in the um, next to the to the address of the website. I will share the link as well in the chat, so you will be able to to see this. Um, we would like to ask you, as, um, as the countries collecting data, what are the main challenges uh, that you that you think that you encounter when collecting public energy identity data? So we propose, like, is it the coordination with the funding institution? Is it the categorization of the projects and data and technologies? Is it the lack of staff resources, the lack of high level engagement, or the lack of clarity in the definition themselves? Or any other. So, if you think those uh, are not the main challenge, please don't hesitate to to share in the chat as well. So, I will share the link uh, in the chat. Um, in the meantime, I would like to to give the floor to um, to Irene Ward, who is program uh, program executive in research, development, and demonstration at the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland. So, the floor is yours, uh, Irene. Thank you, Susie, and uh, uh, we're delighted to be here today to um, share our experiences um, in data collection in Ireland. So I'll just share my screen. And hopefully everyone can see that, yeah. Okay, so, um, uh, Sustainable Energy Authority Ireland um, uh, are the um, responsible data collection in Ireland, and that's RD and D in uh, public uh, public RD and D investment. And so um, I'll be presenting today on a number of items. So I'll introduce the um, SEAI RD and D funding program. I look at the National Energy Research Funders Forum. Um, then give an overview of energy research in terms of data collection, data management and dissemination. And then finally, our national energy research database. So um, SEAI is Ireland's National Sustainable Energy Authority, and we are an agency under the Department of the Environment, Climate and Communications of the Government of Ireland. We're at the heart of delivering Ireland's energy revolution, and we're driving the replacement of fossil fuel usage in all sectors across our society. And we work uh, with government, homeowners, businesses, and communities to create a cleaner energy future. And research is at the heart of our strategy. And so um, the, uh, we lead and coordinate energy research supports um, in Ireland. So um, we do that by uh, running a national energy RDD funding program. We're involved in strategic research partnerships. Um, we also um, coordinate research on a national and international basis. We run an annual energy research and policy conference. Um, we are the contracting party for the um, IEA TCPs. And uh, so we have Irish representatives on nine TCPs currently. And we're also the um, Horizon Europe contact point for energy. And so um, in 2022, um, we set up a National Energy Research Funders Forum. And um, this was to um, establish a national strategic energy research coordination group. 
um, to accelerate transformational and impactful energy research in Ireland. So the main aims were um, coordination and collaboration um, between energy um, funding providers in Ireland um, to identify emerging energy policy needs and any gaps. Um, to exchange information and also to aid in the data collection process for IEA and others, and also um, to look at uh, European and international energy research activities. So the um, four members that inform our data collection are listed here. So we're funded by the Department of Environment, Climate and Communications, but we also work with our Department for Agriculture, Food and the Marine. Um, we work with the Department of Transport, the Marine Institute, Geological Survey Ireland, um, Environmental Protection Agency, Enterprise Ireland, um, Met Erin, Irish Research Council, Science Foundation Ireland, and also um, Housing, Local Government and Heritage and Further Education and Higher Education, which incorporates research, innovation and science. And so um, our data collection, um, we implemented a new process in 2019 and we backdated that to um, data we held from 2014. So we circulate um, an Excel questionnaire, which is different to the IEA questionnaire, and that goes to our primary relevant funders who are public bodies. We collect project level data, including um, the title, abstract, start and end dates, the funding amount, the funding agency, or if there's any co-funding, um, lead organisation and lead researcher. And the maximum amount of funding is that which was awarded at the um, award stage, but it may, expenditure may be different um, during the project. And so for multi-annual projects, we um, <clears throat> take the total budget and divide it by the number of years um, that the project is running in. And then um, <clears throat> the, um, the, the data providers um, classify the IEA to a, uh, a two-digit level, and then SEAI um, classify that um, to a more detailed level. Uh, we do all of the validation, checking for duplication in year and between years or with co-funders. And then we use that to compile um, our IEA or DD questionnaire on an annual basis. And we then have a, um, a national energy research database. This is a centralized location for energy research in Ireland. Um, it provides um, information on current and past energy research projects, and it also helps to encourage collaboration and communication between researchers. So um, there's a, a, you can search by category, you can search by keyword, and it, um, it's um, linked from our data and insights um, website on our SEAI page. And so the main um, users of our database um, are those involved in energy research, um, policy makers, industry, other interested stakeholders, and they can find out more about ongoing research projects and search for possible future research partners or collaborators, but also for um, data providers. And it's an open database with project level data. And again, it's in, um, there's a link to it. And um, today it's very interesting to come along here, um, other people's presentations, and uh, we um, will hopefully um, maybe improve our systems or perhaps learn about other models and maybe recording um, private energy um, RTD investment in Ireland as we um, record public um, data at present. And uh, that's the end of my presentation. So thank you. Thank you very much, Irene. Uh, it's very, very useful indeed to see uh, your point of view as well. Um, 
It's, it's, it's actually quite interesting as well to see that we hear that more and more people asking also about like private sector data at the country level. And we know that it's quite a different way usually to do this. It's more like survey based and um, less individual for each organization. And there's a whole other like project as well. But we see more and more interest in this as well on top of the public and uh, public sector data and we're also looking to improve uh, to improve on this uh, on our side as well so thank you very much um so we can see the results so i don't know if you if anyone has any question for I mean, don't, don't hesitate i don't see any for now but like later we can of course uh, um share the questions uh, with Irene. so in terms of our question, as I asked you before, uh, we can see that it's mainly um, yeah, coordinating with the RDND funding institution, that it's uh, the main challenge that you seem to, to see most. Uh, then a little bit of the, yeah, the categorization of projects and data and technology, where we might be able to help probably a little bit more at the IEA. So thank you all for this interview, it's quite useful for us uh, as well. Then I would like to ask you another question. So what type of support uh, do you think the IEA um, would, what type of support from the IEA would you need to help in your data collection? So would it be like more bilateral meeting and methodology, more experience sharing with those countries or directly with the with your uh, colleagues in uh, other countries, maybe better like documentation, uh, actual online trainings, and any other ideas, of course, uh, please share in the chat. So, as I said before, you can go to menti.com to reply and use the code up there, and I will also share the, the, the link. Uh, so now I would like to, and we'll look at the results after our next presentation. So now I would like to um, to invite our colleagues from the, the Netherlands um, to present. So this is Casper Barens, Stephanie Wolle and Michael van der Bond, who are advisors at the Dutch Enterprise Agency. So yeah, the, the floor is yours. Well, thanks a lot, Susie, for uh, giving us the word and uh, well, to, for hosting this, this really nice presentation. Uh, we like to share, indeed, eh, uh, the experiences with other countries, and it's really interesting to see what you all do. Well, today, three people are presenting. It's Steph. Steph, you see here in the middle and next to me. Steph is a master with pie charts. Of course, we have Casper. Casper is logged in via a different uh, login account. Casper is always sharp with his magnifying glass, seeking for differences in our data. And me, Michael van der Boren, that likes to point to data. Well, we are from the Rijksdienst voor Ondernemen in Nederland. And that's briefly translated to the Dutch Enterprise Agency. And today we would like to share you some info about what the Dutch uh, Energy Innovation Portfolio Team is and who participates, how we monitor and which ground principles we maintain, and how we innovate, research and develop via our data. You can think, for example, about machine learning, but also our technology list. Well, it's maybe nice to show you a little bit how it goes. We have lots of gatherings. Uh, we are colleagues and yeah, we like to, uh, to also have some fun next to, of course, uh, uh, talking about our data. Uh, who is in our team? Sabine Lenkeek, Steph Knibbeler, Jan Lansman, Kasper Barens, Jan Bowman and myself. Now, in essence, what we do, we monitor energy innovation instruments and we do that for the Dutch Enterprise Agency. So here are some examples from reports we make. And for example, we have an instrument report that's very uh, important for policy making. From the other hand, we make lots of Sankey diagrams, what you see on the right side. And for example, you can see here how the money is growing to the different institutions. And we find that also very interesting to see, okay, where do we have to plug and play? So where is more governance necessary? Where is more need? And where is more uh, uh, linkages in, in certain types of innovations? Other uh, uh, examples are, for example, a web-based project database. It looks a little bit too, uh, similar to what Irene showed. Uh, in this uh, database, you can basically search what kind of projects we are funding. 
where they are happening during in the country and also uh, what is the status so for example uh, is there energy research in solar panels or is it more in in nuclear fusion but it's also super cool to watch there and of course we make lots of fact sheets i would now like to give the word to casper uh, Thank you, Michael. Yeah, Michael showed some uh, examples of uh, what we what we do with our data. And uh, in order to do this, we we have um, certain basic principles for our monitoring. Uh, we capture uh, once from the from the source, and we make use of the source data. The source data is, in our case, uh, most of the time the project plan. Uh, we further enrich this uh, source data with other sources like the budget item. Um, external data such as company information from the Chamber of Commerce or SBI codes uh, and uh, metadata such as the EI uh, uh, classification, uh, what kind of product it is and what kind of process it is. Um, and we, 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 we gather this all in one application. Um, and via this, what we yeah we we don't make use of uh, several excels, but we make use of one app, app, application which allows us to with one click uh, that we can make multiple uh, reports. Um, yeah, there are four perspectives on our data uh, in our data model from where we get uh, gather information. On the on the left top is the programming instruments. These are the governmental climate policy uh, policy programs and uh, and innovation teams. Uh, on the on the left bottom is innovation. Uh, this is the state of the art technology, uh, the products and social innovations. Um, and as I said earlier, we label then also the, the innovations on the EIA category so that we can also report on that. Um, on the right top, uh, the finance, this is uh, the budget item of the project. And on the right button, entrepreneurship, uh, which type of uh, entrepreneurship there is like companies, organization and research institutes. Um, and by gathering these four perspectives in our data model, we are, are able to um, to report on the very specific uh, items. And now Stefan will tell a little bit more about how we innovate with the, with our data. Yeah, so um, we are starting now um, to uh, use machine learning in, uh, in, the, um, in what we did the last 10 years, because we've been labeling uh, our projects uh, with the project uh, plans on EIA categories for uh, many years. And another team who was specialized in machine learning uh, asked us to uh, use this data that we have been gathering over the years as a training data set. So they are trying to make a model that learns from the project summary and based on the project summaries allocates it to the right category, EIA category. Um, when this is finished, we will check this um, on quality. So we will check manually if it is able to uh, categorize projects in the right way. And probably in a year or two, we might have more um, machine learning based categorization. But in the meantime, we still do it ourselves. And that's also very uh, important because that improves also future uh, machine learning tools that are based on our classification right now. Um, yeah, next slide. And we're also trying to label on technology specific cases. Uh, what I screen screenshot uh, right here is from the EAA, and it's a poster depicting different technology in very many levels and different um, categories. Um, this is useful for inspiration, but not for classification, as it is very uh, widespread in certain categories and other categories are not specified. And also some names appear on a fifth level, which that also appear on the, on, the six, on the second level. So while it is very handy for getting inspiration in what types of technology there are, it's not a good classification. And we are struggling with this because we get questions from ministry in what types of electrolyzers, for example, we invest. And that the EIA manual is not helping with these, kind of, these type of uh, questions. And we do realize it's very difficult to make a good classification system for technologies. Because yeah, there's always a gray area for, is this this technology or is this this technology? But this is something we are looking into, uh, also looking into other countries, what they are doing, but we cannot find anything. So I'm very curious how the EI is thinking about this part of classification. 
Um, so this is things we are looking into right now. And uh, yeah, I think uh, we can, um, that was for now the, the, the our presentation. And if there are any questions, uh, let us know. But not right now, I think. <laughs> right? We will see. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, friends from the Netherlands, the Casper, Stefan, uh, and Mikael. It's very much appreciated. So, yeah, we don't have any uh, questions for now. Um, it is, yeah, it is very interesting to do this part on like, the more, like, you know, technical side of how to, like, make it a lot more efficient through, like, machine learning that you're using, which is not very widespread for now. I think for most of the countries, it's still very based on like Excel and manual like categorizations. So it's good to see where, like in what direction countries uh, could uh, tend to. So we had a question before, so which may be like, uh, was more of a general question. So what about what was there, if we, if you could um, give us your input on that, which was about, um, if you if we think so it's for us it's for like you as well we think it would be useful to useful to have more standards in tracking data so not on the definition side but more on the standards in tracking data so like the data collection processes are similar in countries so i'm wondering if you if you had inputs for that so this question is uh, for you in the netherlands before irene as well if you have any input it tends to be very difficult yeah, to get one type of standard for your data. That's exactly where you're struggling with. So what we try to find is like an application that can link all those different pillars yeah, that Casper was presenting about to make with one click on the button, multiple reputations. But even in our organization, it's already very difficult to get that done because you have different standards, uh, but also different preferences. Some people really like Excel, others like, for example, uh, uh, well, name it ClickView, you have SAS, SAS Enterprise. Uh, also, we try to use all that kinds of different applications, but there is never an omnipotent uh, application that can do it at all. And that makes it really difficult. So also for the new countries, uh, if you want to make a data structure, it's really important to start with that, like what kind of data structure do you want to use? And how do you connect all those different pillars with each other? That is super difficult, but that helps you so much in the long term. If you have a solid data structure, then you can also report much more easy. And you don't have to do manual work like uh, categorizing yourself. And that's where the pilot of Steph can really help if we have AI that can link uh, EAR categories. Yeah, that would save us a lot of time and also it will help you in, in categorizing it better. Um, yeah, I'd, we'd be very interested to hear um, from you, um, Michael, about uh, about how you get on with that. Um, because that, yeah, it would really help if, uh, with the classification side and reporting side. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I can uh, now show like what result we got from uh, our second get question, which was going to lose my mouth. I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, to what question? The question who was about like what type of support the IEA uh, could give in terms of um, to support the the data collection. So the results show that it uh, was mainly uh, experience sharing from other uh, country. Show my screen. But what do you think was useful with the uh, to to give experience sharing with the uh, other countries? So like we could obviously like put uh, countries in contact with each other so it could be with like smaller smaller like maybe voluntary discussions but also with like more workshop i think would be useful then uh yeah i see i can see the online trainings as well which is something that we we could give with the more explanation on the definition the methodology the technologies and so on so it's very useful information for us um this uh, maybe one last question for you uh, would be um, for the um, for the country. So, would you be interested in collaborating with the IA? So, on the roadmap, using the roadmap as a basis. So, uh, you could say no; it's not necessary, of course. Uh, yes, to uh, assess options for improvement. A yes, to establish a fully new uh, data collection system. 
or like other, of course, uh, please share anything else, any other interest you have uh, in the chat. So the link is the same for the mentee, so I put twice the same link, but it's the same for both, so you can reuse it. Thanks a lot. So now, uh, I now would like to leave the floor to our uh, next and last country. Um, which is the uh, Czech Republic. Uh, so we'll have uh, Shimon Müller from the Ministry of Industry and Trade uh, that will be sharing uh, their um, sharing their experience. I will share the presentation. Hello, everyone. Hi, Shimon. Yes. Yeah. So the floor is yours. Start sharing the presentation any minute. Distinguished colleagues, uh, hello everyone. So, first, I would like to thank the International Energy Agency for inviting me to comment on Czech approach towards public funding of research and uh, innovation in energy. And then uh, I would like to underline that the Czech Republic remains committed to the common target of reaching climate uh, neutrality by 2050 and therefore supports predominantly an increased emphasis on clean research and innovation projects. So, uh, next, next slide. Very quickly, firstly, uh, national energy research and innovation priorities institutional arrangements. So, uh, as I said very quickly, the next slide. Uh, yes, next slide. Uh, main strategy documents uh, covering all relevant sectors are predominant additional research, development, and innovation policy for, uh, and uh, of course, state uh, state uh, energy policy. So you can see the list of our uh, priorities. So I won't tell them uh, right now, but I can read it very quickly. And uh, of course, uh, short and mid priorities are translated through our national program data, which is for data. And uh, in, in, in coming years, we data too. And uh, of priorities, are allowed with separate priorities. If, if applicable, all are directly relevant for the Czech Republic. Next slide. Yeah, here you can see uh, our national priorities, uh, which are, as I mentioned, the most important state and policy, also national priorities for orient research, experimental development, and innovation. Next slide. Uh, yeah, here you can see the list of relevant programs of technology agency of the Czech Republic, which is our funding agency. As I, as I, as I mentioned, the most important program is TETA, which is specifically focused on applied research and most uh, and development in energy, but there are others which are important. And of course, we are also uh, involved in international cooperation, Horizon 20, Horizon Group, before it was the Horizon 2020, but uh, also investment fund, research infrastructures and others. Next slide, please. Yeah, the most important part of my presentation is uh, is focused on collecting data in research and innovation. So, uh, publicly funded research and innovation projects can be searched in the public through our public databases and portals. There are mainly two portals. The most important for our work is Starforce portal. Uh, based on individual goals, and project name, basic information, uh, these projects can be found. These are mainly, as you know, uh, the, the amount of eligible cost and the amount of public support, not every year, but only total amount. Basic information about an institution carrying the research project solution time, 
program of, of a complete uh, project, public tender number, etc. And uh, each specific, specific project uh, has an individual code that serves as a unique uh, identifier. Uh, in the Czech Republic, research and innovation projects data are collected uh, by the technology agent of the Czech Republic. Next slide. Next slide. These public databases are min managed by the technology agency, as I said, and uh, also uh, by Research Development and Innovation Council. The Ministry of Industry and Trade, with the help of technology agency of the Czech Republic, which has direct access to background data, such as eligible costs and uh, public support, uh, is search, uh, search spe specific energy projects in the Czech Republic within the, this Starfus database. They provide us with uh, uh, individual, individual years, as we know the sum of uh, money funded, but we don't know specific, specific years, so they provide us with these data. So the projects uh, are supplemented by already search projects as the search was carried out in 2015 by, by preparing one of the previous questionnaires. And now every year we, uh, we fill in the form of the questionnaire for the International Energy Agency. So uh, that's that's the, the methodology of our work of collect, collecting data. Uh, next next slide. So uh, determination. So as you can see, uh, our money money going to uh, uh, to research and innovation energy. So uh, as as you know, the Czech Republic, as a member of uh, the International Energy Agency, is obliged to report selected statistical data in form of a questionnaire. And uh, as I said before, we, we try to fill in the form every year. And uh, also, I would like to uh, mention that these collected data, we use them not only for purposes of of international energy agents, but also for our national strategic documents. And slide, please. Uh, as you can see, the development of funds for research and development in energy sector shows a great gradual increase in public funds spent on spent on energy projects since the uh, 1990s. It's obvious that uh, research and innovation or research and development in the energy sector is gaining uh, political and social, so, so, social, social importance for us. For this reason, some programs uh, have been set up by the technology agency of the Czech Republic to support not only technological, pro technological projects in general, but also speci specifically research and development in energy sector. The trend of growth in funds allocated to research and development in the energy sector was interrupted markedly between 2014 and 2015, but it's, it was only one year. And since this year, allocation has been gradually increasing again, reaching uh, its peak in 2019. The largest share of funds falls into the category of nuclear fission and fusion. It can be noted that the Czech Republic historically focuses on uh, the research in nuclear energy. And finally, I would like to say, collecting data, there can be some possible distortions, which due to uh, human factors. So, uh, because we do it manually, not we have no, no computers as our colleagues, but we do it by ourselves. So uh, the first distortion could have been uh, to classify the projects in the wrong category. This should not affect the total amount of eligible costs and public support, but uh, could change the ratio between the different uh, categories within the column. 
Another possible distortion could be the incorrect assignment of projects to energy projects, especially in basic research, for example, because projects are always more of borderline nature or it's always being considered whether to include the projects uh, in the list of the projects or not. So uh, that's the second distortion. And the last distortion may be the fact that the support for research is currently concentrated on less specifically targeted programs. So finding currently uh, solved or recently completed projects can be relatively easier compared to projects that have been solved in the relatively distant past. This may partially fall into question the ambiguous increase in spending on research in the, the energy sector over time. So uh, that's all. And I would like to conclude by stating that the Czech, Re that the Czech Republic much updates and benefits from the diverse energy cooperation uh, with international energy agencies. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ivan. Uh, very much appreciated. I think uh, Czech Republic is quite a good example of uh, a country that uses a very like database-based database -based data collection instead of surveys, which is also a way to, well, you do have a lot of work still on your side, but it is a way to also um, uh, simplify the, the data collection and make it more efficient and there's always something to to consider depending on the country yeah. so, we cooperate um, with our technology agency which has uh, or is collecting every year uh, more detailed information so they share with with us and there is no problem but as i as i as i mentioned uh, we we collect this data manually by uh, projects by projects so so it yeah. could be very complicated but uh, it's the most practical way to collect for us because mm. we need every project and we just uh, and we are interested uh, in every every and each project so so uh, we we have a good overview of what is happening and also but quantity is huge so uh, it as I said, uh, in that there can be some distortions, but hopefully not so big. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, well, thank you very much. So I don't know if uh, there is no question in particular for for Shivan on the chat. I don't think so. Um, then I would like to yeah share the results of our last uh, the last question. That we had for you, um, which were like, would you be interested in collaborating with the IA on the roadmap specifically? And uh, um, yeah, and we can see that. Yes, yeah, so, well, yes. Thank you for not saying no. We appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, so for all those kind of like countries that want to to collaborate with us, because we don't have the names here, like please like feel free to contact us. Uh, so I will rewrite maybe like our RGND at all, but also like our address them. So we'll be very happy to 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 discuss this with you and have a one on one meeting so we can go through it and see where we can uh, where like the data collection can be improved. Um, so I don't know if there's any questions. No, so if we don't have any uh, question, please feel free to, um, please feel, okay. Oh, we do have a question. So yeah, from uh, Ali, so, um, Okay, so so this goes for all the all, all the countries. So that is asking that even your data collection, uh, which type of data sources do you mostly use based on your experience? And it, that is probably uh, official sources. So maybe uh, you can start by Irene, if you could uh, give an answer to that. 
Um, so the data sources that we normally use are those provided by um, our um, partners in the National Energy uh, Researcher Funders Forum. So um, we use a, 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 an Excel spreadsheet to collect data from our partners and we also input um, uh, investments made by um, Sustainable Energy Authority Ireland. So um, then we collect within a centralised Excel spreadsheet. But I was interested to hear what was happening in the Netherlands as well and, and in uh, Casper in the Czech Republic. Um, so yeah, I think we'll, we'll look at um, ways of maybe improving our data collection in the future. Thank you, Irene. Oh, maybe a colleague from the Netherlands, I don't know who would like to, to answer. It is in that sense similar to what uh, Irene said. Eh? The, so indeed, we, uh, for example, the Dutch Research uh, Council, we are transferring data with that. And most of the time you do that indeed with Excel. That's a program that everybody knows. It's easy, but you have to have lots of well, talks about what kind of standards do you want? What kind of data? You have to explain like this and this we need. Um, but most of the time, indeed, with uh, Dutch agencies, uh, with the ministries, etc., uh, also with sometimes customers, uh, that we do little surveys, not that much, because we try to make the most out of the original projects plans, and, and that we get in PDF format, and then we trans uh, transport it to our system. Thank you, Michael. Uh, maybe Shimon? I don't know. I don't know if you can see me here, Russ. So the question was, yeah, what's the main like data source? Hello. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, as, as Michael said, uh, I fully agree with with what has been what had been said. Thank you very much. So uh, I see there's no additional questions. So if you have like any questions in general, maybe they can go to the countries or to us, I put our uh, email address that you can contact us um, anytime you want for any support, or any question that you might have, either for us or for the country that presents today, please don't hesitate. Um, and in the middle, I'd like to give the closing words to, to Roberta. Thank you, Susie. Um, and thank you to all the speakers because they made it uh, so useful for uh, such a large community today. Uh, the discussion, I think it's a great example of the importance of sharing experiences among the different, uh, in this case, country experts, uh, where the uh, situations are so different, but where maybe we can also learn from each other and adopt uh, a little bit more common approaches if useful. And I think this is one of the main conclusions uh, that the sharing experiences is that uh, all the participants consensus uh, that is a very important um, uh, opportunity for uh, support uh, from organizations such as the IEA and the Mission Innovation One uh, International Platforms. And so we can commit to continue this type of uh, collaborative uh, uh, approach. Uh, um, and so I would like to thank the, the speakers um, and the, some of the areas that uh, were raised uh, also raised particular attention, including among the speakers, I made the point of the artificial intelligence too, as an example. Uh, is there anything that in practice also could be shared more, uh, more practically among the among hubs? So we can also look at this dimension in the future because we are also this is this opportunity is very important for us to understand what more we can do, what differently we can do internationally to support your so precious work <laughs> that we know is not always done with the full amount of resources as needed. So I also appreciate the request for online training uh, that came through the Mentis. Thank you, Susie, for organizing the Mentis. And it's a way of also involving some of the participants in the in the feedback and so we look maybe at this, uh, uh, especially in this area, this is not uh, typically covered as an area in our uh, sort of standard statistical training. One, one of them is actually running today for energy statistics. 
but it doesn't cover the Airbnb part. So we need to consider how to uh, take this uh, request into account. Um, I also take note of the nice volunteers so that uh, anonymously still, but uh, we were looking at uh, who, understanding who you are, <laughs> are um, appreciative of the opportunity to work with us on the following this uh, tool uh, for whatever, either for establishing a new data collection or for improving some areas based on the experience of others. So we can work together. Uh, we are very, very happy of hearing that. This is uh, the main objective also of this discussion today. So I'm encouraging this uh, five plus four people to get back to Susie with a really more uh, um, clear request. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be happy to get back to you uh, also with a bilateral discussion. So, and, um, and with that, I think uh, this is a very fruitful discussion. We, we, we hope that we made a little step uh, forward in terms of helping uh, the, the national work uh, and I'm sure that uh, this is a, a nice contribution in, in, uh, uh, in view of a really continued collaboration of this type. We really take seriously the commitment of uh, enhancing the opportunities of exchanges and collaboration also among experts in different countries. This is uh, really very, uh, very useful. We think. So, I would like to thank Susie, uh, Ingrida, Mission Innovation, all the speakers and, uh, and uh, the participants for staying until the end. So <laughs> thank you very much and we will continue working together. Thank you from the IEA. Thank you. Thank you very much Bye. to you. Thank Goodbye. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.